this is the Argon News Network, where today we're going number two. G'day, 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 you absolute bunch of Argoniferous legends. Welcome back to your regular dose of single take, single board computer, rod, rod and metro, um, retro computing content. And uh, happy Easter, by the way. It's Easter Sunday as I record and publish this uh, 2024. So I hope everybody is doing well and that you've all painted your eggs and eaten your bunnies. As promised last time, um, we're going back uh, to the 80s. Part 2, part two, with a little bit more emulation. And just to reassure people, in this video, as opposed to last time um, in the video, there will be no jokes or trolling, because in the spirit of love and brotherhood and Easter, all of that, we're not doing that. So back to the 80s, number 2. Um, uh, here we are. We will today, on our Argon, be emulating an MSX, right? MSX was a very unusual beast, because it was a specification rather rather than a computer. So ASCII Corporation, whoever the heck that was, um, published a standardized architecture, um, I guess based on the Z80, and said, here it is, build something like this, and uh, you can make compatible software, which is why when you look on the Wikipedia page, you've got a whole who's who, or rogues gallery, of people who actually made um, MSX computers. Now, uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't the great success. Um, I'll leave it up to some other video videos, go Google on YouTube and find out why it wasn't. Uh, I don't think it was a design by committee issue. I think the, uh, the, the architecture itself was solid, but I guess it's uh, sometimes you need that vendor lock-in, right? You need to like just be in there and, and just have, nope, you can only run Spectrum games on the Spectrum and C64 on the C64. This was maybe an idea ahead of its time, um, which is funny because, you know, just a couple of years later, the IBM PC and all those clones came along. So surprising. And and um, I'll tell you, I, uh, you know, I, I was in the UK, I was in other European countries, I have seen first-hand ZX81s, Sharp MZ80Ks, Apple IIs down there, C64s, VIC-20s, all of them. In all of that, across all, all, all of these multiple European countries, at the time, I only ever saw one person who had an MSX, so um, that was quite uh, surprising. Spectra Video is, a, uh, is one that, that sticks out, they were one of the early um, ones. So anyway, MSX was a type of computer uh, manufactured by lots of different people, and it's a genuine H-bit uh, H machine. So we're going to look at the work of a gentleman who calls himself the Sorcerer, which may just be a joke on source code, but might be a reference to the excellent novel by Terry Pratchett. If you don't know Terry Pratchett, just go out there and read all of his books. It's that simple. Um, and go watch Good Omens on, is it Netflix? Whichever one it is. Um, anyway, the Sorcerer, um, has uh, done this thing called the Argon Electron. Now, the Electron is like a, a hardware abstraction layer. You can almost think of this as a different operating system than the MOS. Now, we'll be using the MOS just to start this Electron HAL, but basically it's then booting into a completely different environment, and that um, environment um, has the ability to um, emulate MSX machines. Now, for those people who don't like flashing your BIOS uh, and your MOS in your VDP. I, I see that on the Facebook. Oh, well, nobody's going to flash a MOS just to place a game. Um, get ready, because you're going to have to do a lot. You really have to follow these instructions to the letter. So, uh, you need an extra SD card. Just download the entire repository. Plonk the, all the files on the root of an SD card. That's easy. And then you need to flash VDP firmware, the one which he's got first. Then you need to flash the other VDP firmware, Electron HAL, which is like the VDP for this HAL operating system, and then you need to flash the MOS uh, which he's got here. And you need, when you download and put everything on an SD card, you will get a modified version of the Envenom and um flash tool, which has a cool extra thing of switch, VDP switch and MOS switch. If I understand this correctly, basically um, your VDP and your MOS remember the current one, obviously, whatever is flashed on there, but it also remembers the previous one, and this command just flips between the two, and you need this capability to uh, actually get this thing to run. I've actually used it elsewhere, but where I have like my standard 104, and I have the, the Quark, and I have the Consolate 2 
2.6 or now even 2.7 and 2.1 and it's easy to flash and back and forth between them so yes you're going to have to flash but you can switch uh, quickly so do all of this and then um, we will switch over to the vice over here after you've done that it will look like this your argon will look like this so we start by doing flash VDP switch. So that's going to swap, uh, swap out this standard 1.04 VDP for the electron uh, one. It's doing that and we can already see things they have a change. Things are looking a little bit blue. So it's HAL version 090. I'm gonna just, I always do a reset after any flashing just to, uh, but it remembers. So it's got the HAL MOS, but it's got, uh, sorry, the HAL VDP, but it's still got the Quark MOS, but it's a special verse version. Notice the RC1 at the end. So now I will do flash MOS switch. And here's the important one. Did my nut here. If you do a typing error in this uh, particular thing, I got I think it's got to do with this electron hell. If you do a backspace, but well, I'll just do it now. I'll do switch. I'll delete the H and put it on again. I do that, and it says invalid parameter because somehow the backspaces don't make it into the MOS. So you have to type it absolutely perfectly. No backspaces, and I think that extends to the thing itself. So now. It's now in the electron OS. We've got an argon, which is not running um, MOS, which is then running uh, VDP. It's now running this electron OS. And you can do a directory. Um, and what can we start here? We'll start with it. The syntax then is open, O-P-E-N, and then the batch files. So other ones you run. So Y-E-R-2.bat. Hmm, what could that be? Ooh, Konami. Konami, very good software. Konami, ah, strong. Whoa! It's Yi Ah Kung Fu. Unfortunately, at least on mine, the keyboard doesn't work. I don't have a joystick connected. Maybe it's that. But it's Yi Ah Kung Fu. And you got the sound. And look, it looks perfect. I mean, even the font and everything. So, MSX hardware emulated. Huh? Cool about that. 80s straight back to your thing. I'm going to show you a couple more just for sh uh, shits and giggles. And when you reset, it will drop back into normal MOS. So, every time you got to do the flash MOS switch. So, we we're in here, nope. and then what else can we run? Um, let's see, open kvalley.bat, MSS6, Konami again. Well, and you want something from me, push space key, I'm pushing random things, it's not doing anything, but King Baz Valley is apparently a platformer on the MSX, and here's the little O3, oh, oh, that's some real 8-bit, that's the noise, that's the noise, that's a happy Easter noise, um, two more, two more, I don't want this video to get too long, because there is a second part which we're going to get to, so again, flash, moss, that switch, um, and it's got lots of bass, so I could now run, if I wanted to, um, I could run the MSX, open MSX.bat, and now it's actually pretending to be an MSX computer as it starts up, which lands up yet again in a Microsoft Basic. All of these ZAZs have Microsoft Basic. Uh, uh, was it demo? Um, I can't even remember. Let's try loaddemo.baz. Nope. Nope. Load. I'm not going to experiment with this very long uh, because uh, never mind. We're just going. So you have an MSX basic, and last but not least, uh, uh, flash moss switch. And uh, what do we have? We have open CPM dot bat. And where are we? We're in a CPM thing. And I guess we can run. Uh, is there anything here I can start as a com file? Example, example dot com. Please enter your name, loser. A bim. Oh. Hello, welcome to Aztec C users. Okay, I guess example is a C program. So, yep, yeah, you're back in CPNM. I bet if I knew how to manipulate this image, I could put Zork on there. I'm going to put a mind map, a tree of how many different ways you can actually now play Zork on the Argon. There's the, uh, I think somebody actually did a native port. Um, there's definitely Vezas VT engine. There's Nihirash's CPNM. You can emulate it on a TRS-80, like see previous video, and uh, run CPNM. Or you can go on MSA. 
Index and emulate CPNM. So that's at least four, if not five, ways to play exactly the same game. Cool, huh? Right, it's MSX. We got an MSX running. So that's it. And yeah, hard reset. Back to this device over here. One very important thing you need to know. If you do exactly what I just told you, it's not going to work. I had to dig around forever, but uh, basically... In the, um, if you look at the the, the batch files, if uh, hang on, I should be able to look here. Let's say this year, I look at this year bat file, and it wants to start a year kung fu dot bin or load a year kung fu. I guess it's a binary um, disk image or something like that. However, if I go to the msx dot bat folder, whoops, sorry, that's not the bat. If I go to the msx folder, you will notice the glaring absence of a year kung fu dot bin. Right uh, there's a note here two months ago the um the bin files were replaced with ips but like this ips5 is only 52 bytes long that seems too short so it looks like maybe the source road was working on something and uploaded an interim version but speaking of version thanks to github what you can do and i will definitely share the link down below because i did have to look for it if you go to the history um you can you go to this one remove bins replace with ipx files ips files and when you go into that you uh um, and to that version, you can actually then um, find the... Um Sorry, uh, find that one. Sorry, you can actually find the before and after here. Uh, Yia Kung Fu Bin K Valley dot Bin, right? And once you save those to the um, uh, to the respective folders and maybe re uh, rename them, uh, then you work it like I just showed you. So the the CPM uh, works out of the box, but K Valley and Yia Kung Fu, you need to grab these bin files. Links will be in the description below, but it shouldn't be too hard. You can go you can go via the version version. So well done on that. Now, with this, uh, I'm kind of out of emulators because I did all the ones last week uh, or the week whenever, last video, um, we're including the <coughs> universal emulator. Sorry about that joke. But now we're just going to flip it on its head and we're still going to do emulation, but the other way around. You will remember from my eye candy video from not too long ago that um, Movie Vertigo had ported Bad Apple and I was only able to show it in, um, in a video because for some reason I can't get it to work again on my Argon. It worked out once but this thing is pushing the limits of the um, the Argon so much that it's sensitive. Maybe I've got an old firmware. I just don't know. I haven't been able to get it to work uh, but I thought, oh man, I really want to, want to try this out. So um, I went back to the fabulous Fab Argon emulator uh, by Tom and the team and again, kudos. I give these regularly but come on, 17 releases. Um since um, foundation, and if we go into the releases, they now support already uh, version 271 of the fair firmware. Somebody's out there making firmware. The 2.0 MOS, 2.20 MOS, they support all of that. Uh, all kinds of soft read, like it supports the Electron ESP. So the stuff which I just showed you, you did in the emulator. And hey, this is cool. You don't even need to, an Argon to do what I'm going to show you right now. So what you need to do is you go in here, you go to the release, um, you grab the latest one, I'll show for Windows, you download the zip, you unload the zip file in your downloads folder. Remember, number one rule of software de development is everything goes in the downloads folder. Don't know what these other directories are about. Um, you extract it there, and then all you have to do is grab um, the contents of this zip file. Uh, I'll link to it in the description below, argonlite bad, badapple.zip. There's just two files in there, a bin and a dat. And you put those on your, uh, here's the unzipped emulator, and you go to the SD card and just plonk those two files. Hope you can see them there. Badapple.bin, badapple.dat, uh, plonk them in there. Now, trick, uh, even in the emulator, to make it run, you need need to um, use a certain command line. So you hit the Windows key, hit CMD to get into a command prompt. Uh, full screen is not going to help. And then CD, DOW, it's for download, tab, tab completion, backslash, FAB, tab completion, bong, unless you have something else starting with fab in your download folder, in which case I don't wish to know you. And now the only trick you need to do now, again, fab, tab completion, and then minus, minus firmware. So we're using 
using the uh, an extra um, an extra switch here, and it's minus minus, not single minus. Linux for the win. Space quark. All this does is that it'll start the emulator with the more classic 1.4, and that's what you need to run this thing. Uh, then, because it drops you into basic, uh, you have to star by. You could also just delete the autoexec.txt from your uh, .txt from your SD card folder. Here we are. We are now in the Mars, and, uh, and then we uh, load bad apple dot bin which is very fast because it's very small and then we run and now it's a little bit slower uh, so while that's loading the data into memory this is a perfect time to remind people to uh, like share and subscribe and remember to tell your friends to like share and subscribe if you like this sort of content and stick around because yeah exactly you can play here at home without an argon which is kind of nice and after this there will be one more special Easter present exclusively for the people who've made it this far in the video so here we are 80 come on baby you can do it so it's a lot of data and it's about to get see this is where all this crap on the argon okay it's pure black and white but it's like 30 fps at least the music is crystal the music is not hard it's just uploading the wave file into the vdp and having it play however i've been told that this animation is actually the z80 pushing every single sodding frame to the VDP and because this is right there on the edge of what the hardware can do that's why it's a bit sensitive to which uh, MOS, which VDP and whatever. Anyway, that's enough J-Pop, hit the reset button. Whoops, today's the wrong reset button. Ah, uh, oh, oof. <laughs> that's better. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, that's the um, that's the music movie Vertigo, and that's impressive, right? That's impressive what you could do with this little machine. I'm sure that was never part of the plan. And yeah, and the surprise is that I was chatting a couple of months ago with Movie Vertigo, and he made a special video just for me on the channel. Um, going to leave it to you. The link is here on the loserbum.com homepage. Um, same thing, you know, you just download a zip file, which is Bad Apple Loserbum version. It even says Bad Apple. Apple because it was easier than rewriting the code. Same instructions, plump them in your SD card folder. Remember to start, to start the emulator with dash dash firmware quark, load bad Apple, run, and then you will see an absolute world exclusive video on your screen. And hey, if you get it running on your Argon, more power to you. I'll keep trying. Um, I'd say that's about it for today. Nice and energetic video. Um, happy Easter, happy 2024. Um, remember, you can hit me up on the old Mastodon. You can find me on Blue Sky. Not a many people there. Discord, just join one of the Argon Discords. I'm not really a Facebook user if I can avoid it. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, emulation back to the 80s. Ooh, and before I forget, I already teased this last time. I think the next Argon TV video, maybe I'll do another one for those Neo 6502 guys. Sorry, been a bit behind. Um, and I will unbox what is in this magic PCB way box. You want to know what's in here because there is something special which could be something for you uh, dear argon users uh, with all that well i've said the like share and subscribe all i can say is that you're all a bunch of argoniferous legends uh i'm loser bum you are the internet and i am out of here <laughs>